Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Chaumont. I got another rant for you today. Before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. Last couple days have been quiet. There've been no, there's been no Indiana Fever basketball games. Um, there have been no Chicago Sky basketball games. I think Bo, uh, Indiana plays tomorrow. I think I think Chicago plays tomorrow as well. Let me check and confirm that. Pretty sure they both play tomorrow. Today, actually, Minnesota beat Atlanta. New York beat Dallas. Connecticut beat L.A. So tomorrow you have Vegas at Indiana, Washington at Chicago, and Seattle at L.A. <clears throat> Let's talk about Caitlin. Ah, dear old Caitlin. There have been a lot of things that have popped off, a lot of things that have been said about her for quite some time. But there was a tweet that recently popped up on my feed. I saw it on Twitter. Um, not on my feed, but someone had reposted it. And I thought it was really, really intriguing and really interesting. And I thought it was really interesting because it showed how long this league hatred or dislike or disdain of Caitlin Clark has existed. So let's go back and let's look at when the actual NCAA Women's National Championship game took place. It took place on April 7th. April 7th was the day that South Carolina beat Iowa to capture the NCAA Women's National Championship. I'm looking at it right now. That is the day. That is also the day that this happened to be posted, which shows this hate. So this is not just a WNBA thing. This has been brewing in these individuals for quite some time. We already know who one of them will be, but let's take a look at this. Well, you look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. April 7th of this year, Dejanay Carrington. Caitlin might league, lead the league in assists this year. Look at who responded. Don't play with me, Nay. That's courtesy of Alyssa Thomas, her Connecticut teammate. The same Alyssa Thomas who set the WNBA record with assists in a single season, and she said it last year. Um, and then finally, we have the wonderful, the ever-loving, the ever-appreciative, the ever-praising Cheryl Swoops. And this was all... I think before the game took place, five thirty-two. I don't think they, was that game at three thirty. Wait, was that game at three thirty in the afternoon? It may have taken right after they lost. Then that it might have been right after they lost. Did they, that game was at three thirty. Um, yeah, the game was at three. So yeah, it happened right after they lost. So now you see what this is. You see Cheryl Soups with her laughing face emojis. Three laughing face emojis. This is at 5.32. So this is right after Iowa lost in the national championship. Mind you, Caitlin Clark had 30 in that game. She didn't play great, but she had 30 in that game. Can you taste and smell the hatred from these women? They are so bad. Like, they're, they're picking on... A col at the time, a college athlete. These are adults. Cheryl Soups is over 50. Alyssa Thomas, how old is Alyssa Thomas? Alyssa Thomas. Alyssa Thomas is 
32. I don't expect much, much from DJ. DJ Nate Carrington's, tw Carrington's 26. These are adults. And they're cracking on someone who just played in the national championship. Alyssa Thomas never won a national championship. That I know for sure. I don't know if Carrington won a national championship, but I don't think that she did. She was at Baylor in 20. Yeah, I don't think she won a national championship, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't think she did, though. And, of course, Swoops did in 1993, three or four, whatever year that was. Caitlin Clark led an undermanned Iowa team to back-to-back -to -back national championship games, and it took a heroic performance from the guards at LSU. Yes, I'm leaving out Angel Reese because it was the heroic guard play that shot lights out from three-point range. Is why they why LSU won a game that they were an underdog in, and then lost to an under. Mind you, this was after after Iowa had beaten an 11-point favorite, undefeated South Carolina. And then last year loses in the national championship to an undefeated favorite in South Carolina. I guess they don't respect her accomplishments. This isn't this isn't this is a disgrace. This is no different than the commentary from one Gino Ariema, who felt the need to talk about how she wasn't ready. The, the, the commentary of Diana Taurasi, who said, Oh, she's gonna have big thing, rude awakening for her or whatever. The commentary of so many different people who have gone out of their way to voice their disgust and disdain for someone who just, fuck, happens to be better than them. Let's take a look at this. Let me show you another screen. Do, 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 do. Let's take a look at this one now. Do, 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 do. Ain't that some shit? Wait, wait, what does that say? What does that say? Did uh, Aaliyah Thomas laugh at Caitlin Clark leading the WNBA in assists? See, I think DJ Carrington was being a smart ass. I think she was taking a dig at one of her teammates, trying to be funny. She was mocking Caitlin Clark because exactly that's exactly what she was doing. And of course, Cheryl Swoops was involved in it too. So she's mocking her too. You know, the one who's 25 years old, five years in the college basketball, takes 40 shots a game. We have four games left in the season. Caitlin Clark could literally not have another assist this year. And Alyssa Thomas won't catch her. Let me repeat that. Caitlin Clark could literally not play the last four games. And Alyssa Thomas will not average nine assists per game to catch 306. She's 36 assists behind. She will not catch Caitlin Clark. Are you laughing now? Is it funny now? Are you amused? Think about this. After Alyssa Thomas, the gap is. 77. And then the Skylar Diggins, it's 79. And then if you go to Ionescu, it's 110. Okay? She's not only winning the assist race, she's winning it by a mile. It's not even close. So are you are you still smiling, Alyssa Thomas? Are you still giggling, Cheryl Mill? Um, Cheryl Swoops? Are you still cracking jokes, DJ Carrington? Y'all look stupid. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> I got one more. Hmm. It's so fun when people say stuff that they cannot, that makes them look so utterly foolish. Shit, let's look at this. What does that say? Let's scroll on down. The WNBA <coughs> single season leaders for re and records for assists. Last year, Alyssa Thomas set that record 
with 316. Courtney Vandersloot was second last year with 314. Well, you look at what? Who's that? Wait, wait. Is that Caitlin Clark? Is she third right now with 306? With not one, not two, not three, but four games left. Caitlin Clark has to average three assists a game to break Alyssa Thomas's WNBA record. Three. Let that sink in. Let that marinate for a minute. So Alyssa Thomas, how about them apples? How about them apples? That mark will be gone probably tomorrow. Caitlin Clark had 12 assists on Sunday. If she has 11 tomorrow, she will break the record. If she has 10, she will tie the record. But that record will be gone by Friday at worst, which means she'll have six assists average over the next two games to break it by Friday. Let's put into context this number, right? She's averaging 8.5 assists per game, 42.3, 34 .7, 90 .7, 53.1%. She's now scoring 19.2 points per game, 5.8 rebounds. Let's take a look at the game log. I just want to give you an idea of what's actually happening here because you really don't want to believe it. Over. The last, let's look here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Out of the last 23 games, in 22 of those 23, uh, Caitlin Clark has had at least six assists. And in that stretch, she's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 double digit assist games. That record is gone by Friday, just based on this. 22 of 23 games, she's had at least six assists. The only one she had less than six was five against Connecticut. In a game that they won. That record's gone. And so you can give, there's another record for Caitlin Clark, the rookie of the year. Arguably the league MVP. And I'm starting to shift my feeling on it. I'm starting to shift my feeling that she is the league MVP. If she won't win it, she probably won't win it because it's already been predetermined. But she is the best player in the WNBA right now i said she'd be probably one of the best in the league she is the best in the league right now in the entire league she's the most skilled the most talented the best she does she's the most well-rounded she does more for her team than any player in the league does right now how many points points created wmba Uh, okay, let's see if I can find this crap. It's up there. She's she's literally created the most points in the league this year, and it's not even close. I'm not even, okay, I forget. I'm not looking all that crap up. But let's go a step further. Let's go a step further. There are now, of course, we are down the home stretch. And in that time, we are looking at how deep of a run can the how deep of a run can the Indiana Fever make in the playoffs? And you listen to ESPNs, and you, and then guess who came back? McNutt, and Monica McNutt, and Chinia Gumake came back, and they are struggling to give her credit. It makes them sick. They can't help themselves, but they don't want to say that Indiana really has a shot. It it, it bothers them to do it. But if Caitlin Clark was not on that team. 
and the Indiana Fever was doing what it's doing, they would be singing such high praises of the Indiana Fever. It would be crazy. So let's take a look over the last. We have to remember they started off one and eight over the last five games. Over the last five games, they are tied for the best record in the league with Vegas, New York, and Minnesota. Their loss was to Minnesota. 4-1, 4-1, 4-1, You can clip them however you want, right? And in that time, they've scored the most points of every single team in the league by a lot. The second most points per game is from Dallas at 446. Indian is at 485. They are scoring at a ridiculous clip, almost 100 points a game. <clears throat> Defense, obviously, not great. Let's look at the next one. Over the last ten games, they are eight and two. They are the second best team in the league, tied with the New York Liberty. Number one is Minnesota. The only team that's beaten Indiana in that ten game stretch is Minnesota. Again, scored the most points in the league by a mile. Second place, Dallas at 888. They are 50, 45 points better. No, 35, 35 points better. <clears throat> Again, their problem remains on the defensive end. They're averaging 92.3 points per game over the last 10 games. No one else is averaging 90. See that? Next one. Look at this one. Next one. Over the last 15 games, they are the third best team in the league behind the Minnesota Lynx and the New York Liberty. 12 and 3, 12 and 3, 11 and 4. They are better in the last 15 than the Las Vegas Aces at 9 and 6. They are better than the Connecticut Sun at 9 and 6. They are better than Seattle at 8 and 7. They are better. Okay. This is no longer a matter of is Indiana good? Indiana's good. And yes, really good. And they're really good because Caitlin Clark is busting their ass. Absolutely, she's getting help from her teammates. You can't win anything by yourself. <clears throat> but over the last 15 games, they're, they're third in the league. Let's look at the next one. This is over the last 20 games now. They are third at 13 and 7 behind New York at 17 and 3, Minnesota at 14 and 6, tied with Vegas at 13 and 7. Again, still the most points in the league in that stretch. We can do it again. Let's go to the next one. Understand, like, this is not the same team that played those first 10 games. They are third over the last 25 games. 17 and 8. Minnesota's 19 and 6. New York is 21 and 4. Tied with Vegas at 17 and 8. Better than Connecticut. Better than Seattle. Better than Phoenix. These are facts. Okay. And let's go. Final one. Last 30 games. For which when you go this this far back, they are fifth. Behind the Liberty, the Lynx, the Sun, the Storm. And there they are. Tied with the Las Vegas Aces. You have a team that's entire season has been greatly damaged by its first eight games of the year, right? And that is, that's included in this 18 and 12. Let the Indiana Fever be anybody else who's 11 and 4 over 15, 13 and 7 over 20, 17 and 8. Over 25, let them be anybody else. And there's not a person on ESPN or anywhere that would say that Indiana Fever does not have a chance 
to win the WNBA championship. I'm not saying they're going to win the WNBA championship, but to sit here and say that a team that is no worse than the third best team in the league over the last 25 games in a season that's only 40, but over the last 25 games is not a threat and a true legitimate contender to win the WNBA championship with how they have been playing. They are not perfect. They have flaws. They are not deep. And their coaching is substandard. But Caitlin Clark is cashing these fucking receipts right now. She's cashing in on these receipts and showing y'all. Y'all don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Kelsey Mitchell is cashing in on these fucking... Y'all don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. The Indiana Fever is legit. And this video will post before the game versus the Aces at home Wednesday night. Actually, tonight. It's now after midnight as I record. But the Indiana Fever is legit. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If they take those two games against the Las Vegas Aces, you can go take a look here at what the record will be. WNBA. Boop, boop, boop. ESPN site's not been working that great, in my opinion. <clears throat> Standings. If they win those two games right now, they are two, they are three games behind the Aces. The Aces have five games left. The Fever have four games left. If they are now 21 and 17 after Friday, that means the Aces are 22 and 15. That means they will be a game and a half ahead. I don't know how the tiebreaker will work out. I don't know. But all that's left on Indiana's schedule is Dallas and Washington. And if the Aces lose their last four and Indiana wins its last four, which is very possible, the Aces play Seattle and Dallas and Connecticut. So they lose four of five. It depends on tiebreaker. But there's these are road, road, home, road. I'm not saying they're going to. But the, the Fever, by winning their last four, could put themselves in a good position to be a five seed and have a first-round matchup with the Aces, either at the four or the five. All that said, Kaitlin Clark's showing you. She's showing it. There's no debating this stuff. This is a different team. And this isn't because she's gotten used to the league. This That, that, that narrative is, a, is comedy. It's comedy. She was averaging 16.5, 6.5, and 5.8 after 10 games, which is a WNBA record because no one's ever finished the season at 15.5 and 5, and she's going to absolutely destroy that number in the last four because she's going to grab four or five boards every game over the last four or five, four games, and she'll finish with over five rebounds a game, and she will be the first player in WNBA history to finish at 15.5 and 5. And she'll finish at well, maybe maybe 20, eight and a half, and five and a half. How you like them apples, Dijanae? How you like them apples, Alyssa Thomas? How about them apples, Cheryl Swoops? Y'all sound stupid. As does every single ESPN pundit, along with that Nimrod twat, Gino Ariema. What are your thoughts on this? I'd love to hear your comments. Leave a comment. Share this video. Like it. Show some love. Become a member. Subscribe. Follow. Let's get it. Come on now.